talking about freedom and joy mm -hmm. well they'll put you to one side a little bit but as soon as you start talking about Jesus they want to kill you mm -hmm. put it because the life in Jesus the lighting of God exposes their corruption mm -hmm. and the Bible says the corruption that leads to death yeah. Donny mentioned this morning that all creation is groaning yeah. under the decay mm -hmm. of death waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. Now, if you're a son of God, you should know that you're a son of God. Mm -hmm. And you have the authority in every situation to speak and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that the glory of God can expose the error, correct and remove death, and replace it with light and life. But it seems like as a nation, as a people, we've wandered away from the, the truth of God for quite a while, quite a long way. I'm going to quote a few verses from the book. <laughs> the book. <laughs> this is the land of the book. <laughs> I sometimes wonder which book is talking about. <laughs> but anyway, enough said. And so there are lots of people through history who <coughs> We've listened to, we've heard from, that the history books are prolific with them. But there's one voice that we very rarely relate to in conversation or in debate or in politics. As Donnie was saying earlier, you, you cannot mention the name Jesus because <coughs> immediately labelled label him as a crank. Not coach. <laughs> But Jesus is the only name, the, see, and I'm whose name, that is liberty, there's freedom. And there's this. pure politics, there's, there's reconciliation, mm -hmm. there's yeah. resolution of issues that are yeah. unresolvable. Mm -hmm. so how long have I done in the last 2,000 years, 3,000 years, of how many wars there have been, how many issues there have been that have never been resolved? And they can never be resolved. Yet in the midst of all that, there's a, the few people who make up the church, the born again people, who are unique. Not because we say we're unique, but the Bible says that we're unique. Yeah. Yeah. And God says that we're unique. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you read that bit in the Bible, it says, You are my son because today I have begotten you. It's exactly, we use the term born again. But only remind us again, we've been begotten of the Father yeah. mm -hmm. and we've been added to his family. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we might not live the perfect life. We might not only go to 100%. But it's just like your life here. Which one of us have ever honoured our parents to such a degree that we, the, the, we were faultless, there were no failings. There's always been issues of running. And then we knew, and we began to develop an understanding, and we understood what we dad meant all those years ago. 
when he was saying certain things think about that. And it's exactly the same with the disciples of Jesus. We are disciples of Jesus. And the early disciples of Jesus were no more unique than you and I, apart from the fact they were the first to be encountered or to encounter Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read a few verses. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a multitude followed him, because they saw the signs which he did, and those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. And lifted up his eyes then, and seeing them a multitude was coming to him, Jesus said to Philip, How are we going to deal with this? How are we going to feed these people? Etc, etc, etc. This he said to test him, for he knew, for he himself knew that he, what he would do. And Philip answered him and said, 200 denarii would not buy enough bread for each of us to get a little. But one of the disciples, Andrew Simon, Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad over there who's got five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the people sit down. The people are hungry. And the people need freedom. And the last thing they want to be told to sit down. Anyway, he fed them, we all know that, but he fed them and there was lots of there was lots left over. And they collected it all up and there was about 12 baskets full. And when evening had come, his disciples went down to the sea. They got into a boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. So they got in the boat they're on the lake, and they were without Jesus. And their, their plan was that they were going to go to the other side to go and do what they had to do. And then it was now dark, and Jesus had not, not yet come to them. And the sea rose because a strong wind was blowing. Even in circumstances and situations where the wind had been blowing, and they thought, you're not going to get out of this one. Uh, the sea rose because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, can you imagine from a row a boat, three or four miles? That's a long way to go. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near to the boat. I thought, they saw Jesus, but they didn't realise it was Jesus. It says in the, in the world, they saw Jesus. Let's give us a bit of context. But they were in the boat, and the sea was very rough, and they knew they were in danger. Not all of them were fishermen. Mm -hmm. Not all of them were used to the sea. Mm -hmm. So when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near to the boat. And they were frightened. Because they thought they'd seen a ghost. He puts it in a, a print. But they, they saw this figure walking on the water and they thought it was a ghost. They were in the sea, the wild sea, and they were struggling to move. And it looked as though they were going to capsize. And in the midst of it all, they seen a ghost. And they were really petrified, <laughs> terrified. They were frightened. And Jesus said to, him, said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they were glad to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land to which they were going. You know, we put our trust in Jesus, we believed in Jesus, and we hoped for many things. We, we hoped for miracles, we hoped for supply, we, we hope for abundance. We hope for healing. We hope for salvation for other people. And 
half of the hook has been vain <clears throat> because it, 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 never, it wasn't sure and it wasn't established as a fact. But God didn't rebuke us. He, he recognised that the faith was being exercised, but it was limited. And if the devil had the opportunity, he would you accuse you of not having enough faith to achieve and to exercise the, the work that you thought you had in the ministry that you had in the name of Jesus. And so you begin to condemn yourself and criticise yourself and feel down. But the truth is, in that limited ability of faith, we've seen God answer and we've seen people saved, I've seen people healed, I've seen the hungry fed and I've actually seen the blind people say, I can see. And I've been standing in the street preaching the gospel, wondering where the energy comes from. And I've seen people, angry people, mm -hmm. standing back where the door is. And they're looking at you and shouting at you. And they throw things at you. <laughs> I'm serious. They throw things at you. <coughs> and if these things hit you, they would injure you. And when there was one situation in Leicester, that, that, that's exactly what was happening. And you're thinking to yourself, this is it now, this is crunch time, what are you going to do? <laughs> so, but you don't quit, you keep preaching. <coughs> and in the twinkling of an eye, you see uniformed policemen arrive. <laughs> Normally, you'd never find a policeman on the streets of the city anymore. <laughs> but in that instance, God arranged to have the policeman there, and the, pe the policeman pursued and run after and caught the perpetrators who were throwing things at us. And the, we talked to the police afterwards and they said, well, we knew these sort of things happened, and so we just keep an eye out for you. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. God sends his angels. Yeah. But it's true. God sends his angels. Mm -hmm. So anyway, what I'm saying to you tonight is, don't be afraid to talk, don't be afraid to speak the name Jesus in every situation. You might not see change, you might not see flashing lights, but I can guarantee issue and the circumstance, the predicament that you're standing in or working in or moving in, when you look back, you'll say, how did that resolve itself? It was impossible. Where did the money come from for me to pay that debt? Where did the ability to talk in a situation where there was so much animosity just to quiet it down and bring reconciliation? Miraculous. And that's what we can all do. If you're just willing to walk and talk, Jesus. Yeah. His name is Jesus. That's what the Bible says. You shall call his name Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.